Hey, what's up? This is going to be about basically recovering a USB flash drive and also walking through the whole process of utilizing one to, um, in, to run a Linux live distribution, which means running the Linux operating system directly from a USB or SD card flash memory, so to speak. So starting with a fresh SD card, this new volume disk V right here that I have, you can see it's blank. It's a, uh, it's a 14 and a half gig volume. It's really a 16 gig stick, right? But formatted, that's what it is. And it's totally blank. I've used this a few times, so you can see that there's no system software or icon. I've completely repartitioned and reformatted it a few times by now. Um, but yeah, otherwise it, it's, you know, just a regular old fat 32 volume. You can plug it into Linux, Mac, windows, drag and drop documents on it, whatever. Use it as just a good old traditional, uh, USB thumbstick or maybe like an SD card. Right. So what we're going to do now is flash L Ubuntu Linux to it with Rufus. So Rufus is a program for Windows. Um, there's a lot of comparable programs, even on Windows itself, but other operating systems that are just to flash to a USB stick or an SD card to take like an ISO image or a .img file or whatever. So what you need to do is the most important thing when using this program, if you have multiple SD devices or USB drives or whatever, is to double check and make sure that you are absolutely selecting the correct one. If you have a physical device that already has uh, some partitioning scheme and you want to use, you want to use that, like say thumbstick or SD card, but you want to preserve that file system that's on there and just use it to experiment right now, you can select it and then click this disk icon and that will ask you where you want to save the file. You just pick some spot in your home folder or whatever, and it will write an image file based on the SD card, you can play around with it. And then when you're all done, you can write that image back pretty much like nothing ever happened. Um, and there's also some tricks with that since Rufus can't, I can take an ISO image that was intended for like a CD or a DVD and I can burn effectively burn that to the USB stick. And I can also add persistent storage, which allows me to then also use the USB stick as a USB stick, right? And drag and drop things to it, like documents between operating systems. Uh, and as well, that allows the operating system itself to save some data so that, you know, updates and stuff like that. So that that live stick almost becomes like an installed system, sort of like a quasi installed system, but it's just installed on the USB stick and it's still fairly portable between uh, different computers and stuff. It's not tailored to one computer or user necessarily. Okay, anyway, so what I will do is I'm going to select, and what I've already done is I took the L Ubuntu, um, you could use pretty much any live type of, Lin you know, any bootable Linux distribution. So I chose L Ubuntu and what I did was I took the ISO, the standard ISO from their site for the 64-bit x86, and I wrote that to the physical USB drive with Rufus, and I added persistent storage as well. So if you do that, if you take an ISO, you'll see right after you add it, there'll be a little slider below it for persistent storage based on the size of the device you have and how much free space. And so I was able to pick 12 gigabytes on mine in particular to basically utilize all the free space for to be writable. So then after I did that, I used Rufus to turn around and create, hit that little save disk icon in the top right next to the device. And I used it to turn around and create a single phys physical image again. But this time it was the, of the USB stick, which contained the ISO image as well as the extra partition. And that's where you get this VHD file. That's more like a virtual machine hard drive. But uh, it's just basically a glorified IMG file, really. So I'm going to 
open that, it's compatible with Rufus and double checking that I am on the right, my 16 gig volume, it's that L Ubuntu limit image and uh, yeah, coming down here, it doesn't let me change any of those. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start and it's saying all the data on that 16 gig is going to be destroyed. Do I want to go for it? Yeah. And last time I tried this, for some reason, it took like over, just over an hour. Um, sometimes it doesn't take that long. But anyway, I'm just going to pause the video and then I'll unpause it and whenever that's done. All right. As you can see, it took just over an hour down here on the little timer again. Okay, so now I have the El Ubuntu virtual hard drive effectively burned. But the icon's gone, right? Because what's happened now is that basically Windows doesn't see the drive anymore. Well, actually, if I unplug it and replug it back in, it should see the first partition, which is the shareable one. I believe. Okay, actually, maybe not. I was thinking, I think, of the Avira image or the uh, the ESET image. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Anyway, that, that whole thing's gone. But what I can do is I can come here and go disk mgmt.msc. Just click on the menu and start typing that. And then right here, this is showing the partitions, the disks and the partitions. So there's the L Ubuntu 20 disk right here. It happens to be disk one. And uh, so it has this first partition as a FAT32, which I'm kind of surprised it doesn't show that in that um, manager there. But whatever, no big deal. That's kind of like almost to be expected. But in some systems, it might show it. So now what I can do to get that to work in VirtualBox is fire up VirtualBox. And what I've done is I've created a virtual machine that's kind of like a scratch virtual machine or a skeleton virtual machine. It's uh, one that I use for live... Linux CD testing and stuff like that. I was testing those antivirus CDs specifically, and then I wandered off testing like just general Linux live distributions. So that one's right here. That's this virtual machine. I can right click it and go to settings. And for the most part, it's just a generic virtual machine. I have it set up for 64 bit Linux. I have it sharing the clipboard, but that doesn't really work unless you install the. Uh, guest editions so some notable stuff maybe is that there's two gigs of memory uh, I went ahead and set it for two cores I have a quad core machine and then the, the display I bumped up to 128 megs of RAM with the VMS VGA with 3d acceleration enabled I don't know if that's worth doing but I clicked that box and then it complained that the other two values weren't set so I set those and this right here, um, normally this is just like an empty image or whatever. This is some working hard drive image, I should say, maybe. Or like sometimes I'll pit a little disk image that has some like malware stuff on it to test like virus scanners against. And then one of these CD-ROM drives I use, you can add, you can click on the controller and then like add optical drives or add... Uh, virtual hard drives and stuff like that and down here you can add a whole nother storage controller which is like a whole new chain and uh, remove a storage controller add storage attachment yeah but anyway one optical drive I use for the live image to boot and the other optical drive I use for the uh, virtual machine guest editions virtual box guest edition CD if I need that because with the live CD you're not supposed to ever take it out right and then with the uh, guest editions, you have to, you effectively need two drives to pull that off. That's why I'm doing that. All right, audio's that. 
Um, sometimes I pit it on uh, Sound Blaster 16, but that seems to work. I switch it to a bridged adapter right there. Um, I'm not into the NAT. The NAT places you logically behind the computer, behind your, uh, your host system. If you do this bridged adapter, it makes it as though you're almost like a whole physical independent computer connected directly to the router. USB 2, no shared folders. Anyway, that's the setup. The main important thing is the storage. So this L Ubuntu stick thing right here is what I want to show how to do. So what I've done is, I, like I said, I unplugged and replugged in that uh, USB thumb drive. So even though it's not showing up on Explorer, it is still plugged into my machine. And my machine obviously knows it's there because this disk thing says it's there. It's kind of scary that it's disk one because it's usually disk two. So I'm used to typing disk two with the partition thing. So that's something to note too, is that these are inconsistent, um, most especially with the uh, SD and USB drives. So be careful with that. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to boot, boot a virtual box a virtual box virtual machine the one i just showed you with a physical usb stick and normally that type of thing i mean it's kind of possible it's a little bit hacky in virtual box but um normally the ideal way to do it would be to do what we did where we created that image and you know you didn't really see that part but then i i created the extra space the uh, persistent storage space i slid that slider up burn that to the USB stick. So I created the, the real USB stick with multiple partitions. Then I created that single VHD image from it. That VHD image would be like the ideal way to supposedly boot a quote unquote real USB stick. But I'm talking about, let's try it with a real physical USB stick. Say you want to fine tune it in a virtual machine to use on real physical computers, which is basically what I'm doing. That's what this is for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the menu. I'm going to, you can type in CMD just, and it will pop up that command prompt and then just right click it and say run as administrator. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to run a VBox. I'm not sure if everybody has the Oracle VirtualBox folder in their path or not, or if I added that myself at some point in time. If you don't, it's in program file, program files slash Oracle slash VirtualBox. We're going to use the VBox manage command. So I'm going to go to CD bin VBox. This is a, oops. This is a little folder I created. Okay, that L Ubuntu stick is still there. And so is my drive. So I'm just going to over, I'll delete that L Ubuntu stick. L Because we're just going to effectively recreate that right now. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll type in the command to do that. So that's VBox manage. Um, I can just type it because if I type where VBox manage, then you can see it's there. But if you don't, no, for sure you can type program files um, Oracle virtual box and then type vbox manage and just go from there like that that percent program files percent will find your default program files directory if for some reason you're running 64-bit windows and you installed a 32-bit virtual box which they discontinued a few years ago, um, that would be in program files x86, of course. But that should be pretty rare. All right. So we'll do the VBox manage. We're going to do internal commands. Oops. I always space it, and it should be one word. Okay. And uh, send, create raw VDK. VMDK. So create a raw virtual machine disk. And we're going to call that file name. L, that file I just deleted. It 
and we're going to pipe effectively make that pipe itself to the raw disk being physical disk or physical drive and then the drive number is that thing in here so make sure whatever disk is so disk one is drive one come over here drive one and then hit enter and if it gives you that thing about the program you might have to put it in quotes okay so created successfully if you didn't get that make sure you're administrator when you do that okay and then if I do an HD, you can see it's there. It's, you know, 546 bytes. So that's that's nothing. That's one half of 1K. That's taking up probably six times. Wait, that's probably taking up at least 4,000 bytes on the disk. Like that's the smallest disk space it can address at a time is 4,000 bytes. So even though that's taking up a whole 4,000 byte chunk, it's only using a small fraction of it. All right, because it's, it's just effectively telling the virtual machine, hey, we're not really going to use this disk file. Use the physical device instead that should be plugged in. And while we're on the subject, what you could, oh, before I formatted the disk when I could still see it, if you right click on it and go to properties, oops, left click on it, then right click on it, go to properties and tools. Okay, so you'll have to find it in this list under hardware. The one I'm using is right there. So that's what you could do. You could right click on any drive really, and you'll get to it, double click on it, change settings uh, as administrator, go to policies and make sure better performance is clicked. And then you'll always want to use this safely remove hard drive thing. I just left click on that, eject, whatever disk or whatever. But that will help with um, a lot of the file copying stuff. Speed it up like tenfold maybe. Okay, so run virtual box shortcut as admin. So while we're in this administrator prompt right here, we can run that um, C program files Oracle virtual box virtual box .exe, right so I'm going to run it from within this administrator command prompt and that's going to effectively run it as an administrator and then you'll see when we do that we go to this settings here it might be mad that I've recreated that file let's see this thing's always a little funny when I haven't done it in a while. C bin uh box. Yeah, it still has that exclamation point, which isn't good. Access, what does it say? Could not open the medium. Access denied. Which I've had that problem before. So one thing to do here. Let's do that. Run that virtual box. Don't close it out like I did. I can go in here. I can go to Virtual Machine Manager and find that Ubuntu stick here. And I'm going to remove it. Right click. Oh, it won't let me remove it, huh? Interesting. What I probably should have done was remove it before virtual boxes. Such a clunky thing. Okay. I'm going to just close all those out, close all the virtual boxes, all of that. I'm even going to close this disk management thing out. And then I'm going to just right click, run as administrator on virtual box. Hmm. So maybe. It's just detecting that I'm running as a different user. So if I run it as a regular user, as my regular user, which normally will do everything but handle that part. I still can't remove it. Is it still mounted in here? 
Okay, duh, that's what the problem is. We'll just change it to this disk for now. Now I can go in here. Virtual Media Manager. Uh, remove it. Okay, now if I try and set it up now, we should get that same problem for a uh, Hmm. Now it works. Did I must have? I didn't run this one as administrator. Okay. So we can see it's got the the not exclamation point thing there. Whatever song and dance you have to do to get that done. Normally you have to run VirtualBox. We'll see here in a second. Because if I try and double click to boot this, it should say permission denied. Pop up a little error box here in a second. And then what we'll have to do is we'll run it as an administrator. Well, so far it's starting. Okay, that's bizarre. That's cool though. It must be a new thing in like VirtualBox 6. So if you're using an older VirtualBox, what you may have to do is you'll right click VirtualBox, go to, I think properties, compatibility, and then run this program as an administrator. You may have to do that. We'll see if it actually works in a, a like to actually it looks like it is it's booting up so it's got to be reading that usb disk okay so contrary to what the internet says about having your own virtual box as a as an administrator that's not necessarily true so i'm now booting off of the physical usb drive inside of this virtual machine I'm going to try this control C. It never works. So to skip the file check. There it is. So it detects the size because it's plugged in. So it knows it's that stick. But like I said, that's just that little tiny file that we created with that command line. So that's how you get it this far. I'm going to pause it and let the virtual machine finish booting. I'll show you that. Then I'll shut it down and show you how, once you're done playing around with it, how to get your uh, your stick back formatted as a FAT32 volume showing up in Windows Explorer uh, with the full size available. All right. So here's that L Ubuntu 20, uh, basically a live image. Boot it up. I'm running very slow. I think uh, that USB drive I have is already kind of slow, and then I have a bunch of USB stuff plugged in all weird and recording a video at the same time. I think that's what's slowing it down. So anyway, if you do do one of these Linuxes. Um, one thing you'll notice if you boot it in a virtual machine, like on real hardware, from my experience lately, it has a tendency to like detect all the monitors, um, go full screen, all that kind of stuff. That's really nice. But in the virtual machine, you might find that you don't even get a screen this size, which is my computer set to 720 right now to record this video. But um, yeah, you won't even get that small of a screen which is basically like a little laptop screen. So what you can do is you can go into preferences, I guess. I'm not sure. Or actually on this distribution, you might just be able to right click the desktop and go to desktop preferences. No, you can't see the resolution in there. Okay. I'm trying to remember how I did it on here. So there is a search box. So what we need is R-A-N-D-R. 
okay, so they don't have it. So what I must have done was I opened a terminal by going their terminals and system tools Q terminal. And then some installs this one I've probably installed LX Rander. Yeah, it looks like I nope. Okay. So we'll just use the command line. Um, that would pop up a little thing with a drop down box where we can change the resolution. What we can do is just type X R A N D R and hit enter. <clears throat> and then shift page up will or scroll with the mouse and you can see there's all the resolutions that should be supported on your current setup. You can see I'm at 1440 by 900, so I want to go ahead and change it to 1280 by 720. And so to do that, I'll just type X R A N D D R dash dash size, or I think you can just maybe do a minus S, and then I'll do a 1280 X 720. And right there, boom, it changed the size, the effective resolution of that virtual machine. So now I've lost a little bit of real estate, but um, it's more, it's less scaled. It's more the realistic size, right? Oops. Which, what is this host fool? Going for something like this. Oh, so like that, I would even have to scale it down further. I wonder what would fit in a 720. Come on, thing. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. It's slow. There we go. Okay. We could try, I guess, um... What we have 1280 by 7, oh, 640 by 480 would be the next lowest one supported. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, I'm gonna have to be happy with that. And then what I'll do is I'll do view and scaled, which is host C, right? Control and C. And then that just, it uses a little more processor and everything, but at least then we could fit everything in the screen. And with this, I don't wanna install that. So I could right click delete. So anyway, I just want to kind of show you there's that. And what I've done is um, I run the updates on here. So if you have this, you can do a sudo apt get update. And then that will download like the latest um, manifest files about the packages and stuff. It's kind of like an ugly version of an app store. Linux was doing this. They sort of set the precedence for that and then when Apple and Google came along they just followed suit and just made it added the eye candy layer but anyway once this process is that we can attempt to do an upgrade which I've already done and those changes have persisted that's why when I started my virtual machine it was like already at a reasonable resolution and stuff because I'd already come in and tuned that and because I created this USB image or this USB stick it uh it allows it to save that stuff. Okay, in a year now. What is going on? This stick is just really slow at writing. I think it might be I must be degrading it maybe each time I format it because it just seems like it's getting slower and slower. But the last time I just plugged it into my system and rebooted outside of the virtual machine, it ran very, very fast. But one time it did run very slow like that as well. But the second time it ran like almost like an internal hard drive. It was very fast. Okay. Anyway, you're just going to have to take my word for it. I don't think anybody wants to see here all day. I don't. Um, so I'm going to pause it. And then when I come back which will be about two seconds for you, you will see how to restore the USB drive. Okay, something trippy just happened. It says error timeout was reached. And I was like thinking right after I paused it, right? And I was thinking, whoa, what's up with that? You know, it's really that slow writing to that drive. And then I thought, wait a minute, 
remember how administrator privileges are required? I think to write, to actually save stuff. I'm thinking maybe that was the reason administrator privileges are required. So I could test that by uh, trying to touch, touch this dash file. So that's there. If that persists, if I were to reboot and that persisted, then uh, we would know for sure whether or not that was the case. But part of me's thinking, um, you know, I could give care less about anything in the world more right now than that and sitting through another reboot. And then the other part of me is saying, I can't live unless I know the answer. So I will uh, be pausing the video and figuring that out right now. Okay, what I'm going to do now is run this as a virtual or as an administrator. But I'm going to go to properties, compatibility, run as an administrator. I could do it for all users. I'm just going to do it for me. And then I can launch that Oracle Machine VirtualBox Manager thing. I closed out all the old windows. So this is ensuring I have the freshest window. And go in and double check these settings. The storage tab, we can see the old Ubuntu sticks there. Okay, so now as an administrator. Maybe it will even run faster. I'm downloading the uh, Tails. Live, it's a live Tor CD Linux-based OS. So that's my next thing I'm going to mess with. All right, English, start. Now, of course, it doesn't give you much feedback after you hit enter right there. You just have to kind of trust it. You can use the arrow keys to move your selection, and you'll notice that after you hit enter, you can't do that. So that's how you know it's doing something. And pausing. Okay, so I let it run the disk check thing completely without trying to press Control C. I don't know if that had an effect. It seems to be running a little bit faster. Like, it seemed really responsive. I went ahead and fired up the terminal before I unpaused the video, and it fired up really fast. And this file persisted. It's still there. So that persistence is for sure working on the real USB stick. And what I was going to try was this thing right here to just disable journaling. I don't think I could copy and paste. So it's 2NFS. Minus looks like a capital O. Oops, so tune two FS. Has underscore journal. Oh, you know what? I can't run this command while it's mounted. Uh, dev xdy. Okay, forward slash dev. Um, I'm not even sure. So what I think I can do here is a line continuation. And then a control C. And that allows me to get my command line back. All right. So... LSBLK, and we have which one um, FS tab? So cat size fourteen point five gigs is SDA. Okay, so that twelve gig SDA two. That would be the one. So SDA2, that would be the 12 gig, should be ex extended 3, 
system because the SDA1 should be ISO 9660. All right. SDA2 is 12 gigs. As journal spelt wrong. Um, I still haven't unmounted it. Unmount. Or if it'll let me. Or it's U mount, right? SDA2 not mounted. Okay, so let's tune it. Permission denied, so we can do a sudo. The needs recover flag is set. Please run. That's what I was kind of wondering too if there was something going on like that. Okay, so E2. I guess this is the more thorough. Permission denied, and just do a sudo. In use, I thought it said it's not mounted. You mount. Okay, Linux GNU operating system. Hmm. I don't know. Oh well, I'm not concerned. I tried. It's running fast enough right now anyway. So let's get this disk since I'm don't even care about its persistence I can just close the virtual machine because even if the files get all screwed up I'm just gonna erase the USB anyway um, I'm gonna leave that the same for now on my end and what I did do was I went and ran as administrator right pretty sure and I'm pretty sure I showed you guys that so I went there right click properties uh, compatibility run as administrator and everything seemed to work a little better like that. And USB disk is gone. If we were to open up the disk MGMT thing and try to dink with that disk and go, okay, here it is, the 14. Okay, yeah, there's 12 gigabyte healthy. 12 so I want to effectively I don't care about the files on there I want to effectively extend this all the way and have the drive letter show back up so what if I right click it change drive letter and paths so I can add a drive letter let's add the drive letter V to it assign the following drive letter okay now let's come back over here oh hey there it is that's all I had to do to get access to that partition was just assign it a drive letter okay and then I can come over here, healthy partition. It won't let me assign a drive letter, so that's not... So that's what we would have had to do to make this truly shareable. Sorry that that's sort of in backwards order there for you. Okay, but the problem now is that it's only a 2.4 gig partition. But we know this has at least 14 gigs on there. So what now... It's like, that's cool that Linux is on there and I could boot that, but I'm over it. Like I want, I just want my thumbstick back, right? So, sorry. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete these partitions by click, right, click on it. First, always left click in Windows, right? And then right click and then delete volume. Double check, it's the 14 gig. Yeah, okay. So whatever that is, is now unallocated. And then on this one, I'm going to right left click then right click and I can't maybe I could just format that yes quick format all the defaults okay and then the problem is it will just take a minute because it's going to do a quick format the problem is is that it's uh let me close this one we're just going to end up with a blank stick like that's still 2.4 gigs it's like oh still haven't got it back so like what can I do it won't let me delete this partition maybe if I ran it as administrator or something but now we got these two chunks how do we get it back to normal right so here's the fix open the menu type in CMD and right click run as administrator and what we're going to do here is run dit make sure administrator and then run D-I-S-K, P-A-R-T, disk part. And that will pop open a little partition command prompt thing. And you can type list, D-I-S-K, singular. And there's your disk. And we can see disk one is 14 gigabytes. Same thing as in 
effectively the same thing as over here, like those results, right? So we want to just double check. So don't think that your disk is the same if you've unplugged it and plugged it back in. And even if you do it 20 times and it's always the same, believe me, that one time it will switch on you and you might erase something, so be careful. Um, so we do that. We need to select it. So we select... Um, how do I type it? It's right there. Where to go? Select space disk number. D-I-S-K space. And then for me, it's one. And then we can list this again. Double check that that's the one selected. And then what we want to do is just run the clean command. And that will just take a second too. And that does a part. Now we type exit twice. So now you can see there's the disk, whatever. So if you want to, you could just right click format right here. Or you could come in here. Um, if it's not refresh, then just go to action refresh. And then make sure you're on the right disk and you can right click new simple volume. And but I want to see if it will just work. What happens if we just try and do it over here? Unknown capacity, huh? Ooh, that's sketch. I'm not going to do that. I'm scared that I might mess something up. So I'm going to stay in here in this disk management thing. I'm going to right click new simple volume and click through this wizard. Just let it pick the maximums. Add the following drive letter. I want the drive letter. Oh, it won't let me do V because it won't let you pick its last drive letter. So you can change it to something. You can change it to just anything and probably accept the defaults, maybe perform that and maybe uncheck quick format. That was one of the ways too when I looked it up online. If the USB disk is going slow, you might consider doing a full format on it. Um, and I think if that recovery flag is set that needs check, that sometimes might slow them down too. They might automatically go into like a safe mode. And that can happen with the way that like I unplug them and switch formatting on them and all that. Who knows? But anyway, I'm just going to hit next on the default, finish. And in just a second, that should be a nice, uh, what a FAT32 partition. Or actually, we're going to have to format the file. This should just partition it. So now it's a healthy partition. Is it actually accessible though? Yeah. Okay. So we did format it. Okay, so now we just want to change the drive layer. So we go back in here, right, left click, then right click, properties. Is that where it was? I can't even remember. Uh, verbatim. Where's the drive letter thing at? I was just there. Change drive letter and pass. Okay, change this one. I guess we can give it multiple pass drive layers and I'll go ahead and pick V now that it's available again. All right, 14.44 gigabyte FAT32 V, all healthy. Back to normal, just like when we started the video. Pretty much empty and ready to rock and roll with documents and pictures like a good old fashioned USB drive. So that's how you do all that. And thanks for watching.